As uh, the session chair mentioned, I'm Joshua Bakita from the Department of Computer Science at UNC Chapel Hill. And today I'm presenting my work, Simultaneous Multithreading and Mixed Criticality Real-Time Systems. This work is motivated by the question of how do we get more capacity out of multi-core? So some existing techniques that help with that question include mixed criticality provisioning. Mixed criticality provisioning helps reduce capacity loss by reclaiming slack from high criticality tasks for low criticality ones. An example of how this layering of schedulers works is shown in the bottom left. For example, if we have a high criticality level, um, say level A that uses a table-driven cyclic executive scheduler, um, with this being our highest criticality task, it uses a very pessimistic provisioning scheme and will very rarely run all the way to its worst case execution time. Um, what happens in a mixed criticality system is then after the work at the high criticality level completes, we can run work at a lower criticality level. For example, level B here, also hard real time using a um, static rate monotonic um, scheduler. Um, that even will un likely is unlikely to run all the way to its worst case execution time, leaving time for, in this example, a soft real-time level, uh, level C to run using global EDF across all of our cores. Now, this is only one way to get capacity out of multi-core. Another way is hardware partitioning. This reduces capacity loss by removing interference that can inflate execution times. A common application of hardware partitioning is to the last level cache in a multi-core system. For example, Here's how we may want to partition a last level cache for the mixed criticality scheduling hierarchy shown at left. We can subdivide it using cache coloring and way partitioning into different sections. For example, here, we can allocate hard real-time tasks their own exclusive portions of the last level cache separate from the soft real-time work. This prevents the soft real-time work from evicting cache lines from the hard real-time work meaning that we no longer have to add an additional inflation when we switch between hard and soft real-time work. A third way that we can get more capacity out of multi-core that is relatively recent is via simultaneous multi-threading or SMT. Um, Intel calls this in its marketing materials hyper-threading. This reduces capacity loss due to intra-core execution unit stalls by allowing processor cores to dispatch from two instruction streams or threads simultaneously. And this is available in many CPUs, not just x86. ARM has some designs coming. I think there's a wide variety of power PC designs uh, from, uh, or power designs from IBM. But an example of how this helps reduce capacity loss is shown in the bottom right. Um, we show a single core with two execution units running two tasks, either sequentially or with SMT. When we run them sequentially, execution units are often idle while one task does something like a memory fetch or a write or any other sort of um, execution which can uh, branch maybe, which can cause a stall. Um, this leaves execution units idle. When we apply SMT, we can pull from either of the two tasks instruction streams. So for example, here, when task two stalls on something like a memory load, we can pull in work from task one and execute those on the execution units while we wait for the load to come back. This results in a higher total utilization of the execution units inside of the core and allows us to complete all of our work faster than if we just simply run the tasks sequentially. Um, so for these two example tasks, it is a beneficial to use SMT and to run the tasks as a pair. That is not always true, as sometimes when we pair two tasks, they interfere with each other inside the core and actually become longer. Later on, we'll take a look at um, how often there is a benefit or not. But we've already looked in prior work at UNC um, at combining mixed criticality provisioning with hardware partitioning. Our framework is called Mixed Criticality on Multicore, or MC squared. We have yet to consider the addition of simultaneous multi-threading. And so in our work, we try combining simultaneous multi-threading with mixed criticality provisioning and hardware partitioning. This raises several key questions. First, how do we combine SMT and cache partitioning? Specifically, how do we handle many shared cache levels? And when we add in cache partitioning, does this change the benefits that we see from SMT as found in prior work? Secondly, when we combine SMT and mixed criticality cache, uh, sorry, excuse me, mixed criticality provisioning, at what levels do we want to use SMT? Just how does it map into a mixed criticality context? 
And finally, when we combine SMT cash partitioning and mixed criticality provisioning, do we actually see a quantitative benefit? And can we be validate that benefit via a case study? So first, SMT and cash partitioning. The key problem here is can we handle many shared cash levels? I've shown a simplified illustration of part of the processor that we use in our experiments, the AMD Ryzen 9 3950X. Um, this is kind of similar in some ways to some embedded ARM designs that we think are coming. Um, but what's key to notice here is that there are four cores, each with two threads. However, the two threads care, share three different cache levels, both the L1, L2, and L3 caches. Previous multi-core um, work dealing with hardware partitioning only had a shared last level cache typically and didn't have to deal with these multiple levels. And so is the question, can we simultaneously partition that many caches? So unfortunately, the L1 is just too small for any partitioning technique to work. Um, we can't use way partitioning. We can't use cache coloring. It, it's just too small. We can partition the L2 using page coloring though. Um, however, this has a side effect in that it also subdivides the L3 meaning that we try not to use, we don't use um, page coloring for any additional subdividing of the L3. Instead, we can use hardware features that are very similar to way partitioning to subdivide the L3 among cores and criticalities. Now that we have been able to subdivide the caches between the different threads to prevent interference, the question comes up of, oh, excuse me, I would like to mention though, um, our implementation is of this cache coloring scheme is much better than any prior that we're aware of. Uh, we were able to do this in a point in the Linux initialization such that our implementation is only 23 lines. Um, as far as we're aware, this is more efficient and comprehensive than any other uh, prior page coloring work that we've come across. Uh, I'd love to hear if you have a better, better system, but I'm very proud of ours. Um, but the question that from a research perspective, does this actually help SMT? Um, like when we have cache partitioning, does this change what set of tasks we see a benefit from running with SMT rather than running sequentially. To test that, we measure the maximum execution time of all po possible task pairings from several different benchmark suites under all cache partitioning approaches and compare those times when we run the tasks together as a pair to their times if we were simply to run them sequentially. I've shown a table of our results at right. The key number to look at here is this percent of pairings where SMT was beneficial. This is where we were able to reclaim capacity when we ran SMT. It was faster to just run the two alongside each other rather than run them sequentially. So in the vast majority of cases, it is beneficial to use SMT than not to. However, um, if you look between our different configurations of the caches where we do no partitioning, only partition the L3 or partition both the L2 and L3, you can see very little difference in the percent of pairings where SMT was um, beneficial. Generally, it, it's fairly unchanged um, for all of our different benchmark suites. We considered three different ones. Um, and this is a really good thing is this means that prior work looking at this using SMT in a real-time systems context is still applicable when we add in cache partitioning. Moving on to our second question of how do we combine SMT with mixed criticality provisioning? The key question here is how do we map SMT into the mixed criticality context? Like at what criticality levels is it acceptable to use SMT and how do we want to use SMT? So here's the example hierarchy of schedulers that I showed earlier. We're gonna tweak this a little bit um, when we add SMT. So I'll go ahead and fade out the old configuration. Our new configuration still keeps a table-driven scheduler in the highest criticality level, but we allow SMT to be used in very restricted cases. Um, here's an example schedule showing when we allow SMT to be used. We only allow it to be used for specific pairings of tasks that have been previously measured to benefit from running with SMT rather than running sequentially. We never use the other thread for any at any other time except when running as this uh, running in this task pair. We always start the two tasks in the pair sequentially and never run either task individually. We only ever run it alongside its pair to encourage timing determinism. Um, we call this co-scheduling. We use a very similar technique in our hard real-time level B. 
Um, however, since it's so similar, I'm not going to try and give you an example schedule. schedule. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about our level C. Previously, if you remember, we had a global EDF scheduler across all the different cores. When we add in SMT, we break that up into two different clusters. These clusters are threaded and then unthreaded clusters. This is to protect work. We put all work which benefits from running with SMT in one cluster and all work which does not in the other cluster. The unthreaded cluster, here cluster two, um, just behaves like normal standard clustered EDF, whereas the th cluster that allows threading treats the additional threads just as if they were cores. So here, if this was a threaded cluster, cluster one, we would treat it as if it's a four core um, UDF, uh, clustered EDF container. Um, this is maybe a little clearer if I show you an example schedule inside of these two cores. Um, we have four different tasks and note that after the level A and B work runs, so we always remember this is a mixed criticality system, so always the highest criticality work runs first. We only run the lower criticality work once the higher criticality work is done. We apply that to both threads. But once it's done, um, we can just treat those additional threads as if they were cores. So notice, for example, that task eight is not constrained to run alongside any particular task. We've started alongside task seven, but finish it alongside task 10. We also don't impose pose any sort of um, requirement that starts are synchronized. Note how task nine here starts a while after task seven. Um, so this is really just treating it as if it's a four core um, cluster with uh, global EDF inside of the cluster. So now that we've got this, uh, we've looked at how we combine SMT with cache partitioning and how we can combine SMT with mixed criticality provisioning, what is the actual benefit we see when we combine all this together? Um, and to answer that question, we measure our improvement with an overhead aware schedulability study. I've included an example schedulability graph of ours at right. Um, this shows what percentage of synthetic task systems of a specific total utilization can be scheduled such that they meet all deadlines. To look at a specific point on this graph, consider a system utilization of 5.5. So we, if we generate task systems of utilization 5.5, if we don't use SMT, so we don't, um, we just use prior state of the art, we can't schedule any of those task systems. However, if we use SMT, we can schedule about 35% of the task systems that we generate at a system utilization of 5.5. So the key improvement we wanna look at here is the difference between the prior state of the art without SMT and our results with SMT. We can measure the improvement by looking at this difference here, the improvement in schedulable utilization area or SUA. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you all of our results as there were over 240 different um, configurations and parameterizations we considered. Uh, many of our parameters were informed by benchmarks, but I can talk to you about the average improvement in schedulable utilization area. And the improvement overall is 32%. This is very impressive as our original question of how do we reduce capacity loss on multi-core? How do, how do we get more capacity out of multi-core? Well, if you use SMT, we found you can get 32% more, um, you can schedule 32% more utilization than you could before. That's very compelling. That's equivalent to, in a four core system, adding more than one additional core. Um, however, this does raise the question of, since these were synthetic experiments, can we actually validate them in a case study? And do those task sets that we claim schedulable in our schedulability study run without deadline misses on an actual platform? So to answer this question, we implemented our system combining SMT, multi-level cache partitioning and mixed criticality provisioning and a Linux derivative called Litmus RT uh, 5.4. Our results were very compelling. We tried 10 different task sets for 60 minutes. This is tens if not hundreds of thousands of jobs and found no deadline misses at any criticality level. So not at level A, level B or level C. This is pretty surprising for level C as level C is a soft real time level and we expect some amount of deadline misses as we only have a guarantee for bounded tardiness for soft real-time tasks if, if you recall. Um, this may indicate that some aspects of our provisioning are conservative uh, but it is encouraging that we were able to validate our results in an actual case study. 
I will additionally note here that while um, in the paper we only discussed these tasks that we ran for 60 minutes, I've run additional tasks that since then for days, well, at least 24 hours, um, and found no deadline misses. So really strong, um, encouraging results from our case study. So in conclusion, when we combine SMT with cache partitioning, we can handle many shared cache levels, but this doesn't change the benefits that were seen from SMT in prior work. When we try and combine SMT and mixed criticality provisioning, we best to use co-scheduling for high criticality tasks and just a sort of clustered scheduling for low criticality ones. We found that the quantitative benefits of combining all um, SMT cache partitioning and MOOCs criticality provisioning is a 32% increase in schedulable utilization area. And we were able to validate the benefits of that via a case study. So I can now take any questions and thank you for coming to my talk. And I also encourage you to read my paper. Thank you. <laughs>